What do you want to do with this amazing property? I'll show you. Okay. Let's go. Awesome. My name is Jim Gale, and for the past 14 years, I've been on a mission to show people how easy it is to grow food instead of lawns. Well, it's a little bit whiny. Whiny. <laughs> Yeah. Seeds of life right here. Magic beans. Magic beans that turn into life. I mean, how much more magical can you get? Look at that. This is, this is, like, this is like treasure hunting. <laughs> Holy snaps. Oh, the flavor comes on. My whole mouth is alive. <laughs> I closed my eyes so many times and I was like imagining the grapes here and now I don't have to close my eyes because there are grapes here. We're in a time and a culture in which people feel so disconnected. Yeah. And, and they want to they feel like you have place in the world. Gosh, that's powerful. And now this bat box yeah. has a place. Yes, it does. In the last two years, more people have chosen to grow food at home than any time in history. You know, people say that the Garden of Eden is a utopic fantasy when it's the next logical step. So if you want more abundance, more flavor, more freedom, more energy, join me in the land of plenty. This is a wild hibiscus. You can actually eat. Nice. You've been eating all the food. Oh, you gotta share. Share, buddy. <laughs> and, and check out that leaf. Uh, Isn't that amazing? Hey, hey, Inspired Tribe. How's it going? Welcome to another Inspired Conversation. My name is John Nolan, and today we're welcoming a very, very special guest on the Inspired channel, Jim Gale, founder and CEO of Food Forest Abundance. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Well, thank you, John, for having us here. And uh, I've loved your work. Inspired is like my favorite word. I, it's because it means it's so much more than a word, right? It's an experience of living in the flow of things, living connected to this energy stream that is so abundant and so everything. So I just, I wanna thank you too for the work that you've done. It's just beautiful. Thank you so much, brother. And something that you already noticed, Tribe, that I noticed the very first time um, we talked to Jim is his inspiration, his spirit, the energy that you can feel its coming through his eyes, through the words, through every fiber of his being. And Jim, I want to ask you something. Uh, this is at least true for me. When I found my calling my purpose, when I found what really, what I'm really here for, this energy seems to be present at all times of the day. Even when you're tired, you still have that energy. Was that the same for you? And when did that begin for you in your life? Well, so they called me nature boy growing up. And whenever I was connected to nature, I felt inspired, which is, so I look at my emotions as my compass for life. Am I going in a direction that is serving me and others or not? And that's based on the feeling I get. So I went through the most of my life feeling that, but not understanding what it meant or where it came from. And then I kind of red pilled, well, I completely red pilled about 15 years ago. And I went through the cognitive dissonance phase of my life where I was not feeling inspired, right? I was feeling fear and worry and concern because I had my first two daughters. I've got four baby girls. Well, now they're not babies anymore. I've got one two and a half year old and one 17 year old. Um, and so when I, when I went through that period of separation from source, from spirit, from God, I felt this pain. And then just about a year ago, maybe a, a 12, 13 months ago, I came fully back to the connection. And that's when the miracle is just every day, all day long. Well, that's a very inspiring story. And I know you have your whole life story. Um, it's a, it's a full circle experience. As you said, you started as nature boy, right? And, and that's always as a child, uh, I read that about you always very, uh, very out with animals, nature, that's where you felt most alive. And then I, I, I read that you were a wrestling champion and really, really um, successful in that field. And then at the tender age of 29, uh, you just kind of decided that it's time to become really uh, wealthy and independent and retire in a few years. So you go out and, and help build this billion dollar mortgage company. What was the moment in all of this where you felt this might not be the right track? I might not be where I need to be. I might have to come back to my roots. What was the, what was the, the, the deciding factor in that? 
So it was such an interesting time of life. I was, I lived after college and wrestling. I moved to Hawaii for four years and lived there and I lived the bartending life. I was a bar manager. In fact, Prince, who was one of my favorite artists of all time, came to our bar, my bar on New Year's, two New Year's in a row. And, and in this little strip mall in, in Maui, Hawaii. And I just thought that was so cool. But then- oh, you're got, both Minnesotans, right? You're Minnesota yeah, too, yeah. Yeah. And then I, I, you know, after a certain age, I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. So what's next? And several of my friends had traveled around the world. So I got a backpack and I moved to Surfer's Paradise, Australia. And I went to Bond University every day and I bartended at night. And the funny part was everybody says you can never get a job here. I, anybody that says I can't do anything, I just go, okay, okay. And I just ignore that completely. Um, I got a job within a day and I was bartending on the strip at night and I was going to Bond University during the day and I went up to their library and I started studying Jim Rohn and Zig Ziglar and all of the most transformational people in history, Dennis Waitley, and reading the autobiographies of um, all these different amazing people. And I started to realize, right, looking through my realize that what was possible. So I wrote my goals that I wanted. And, and at the time I was broke, right? So my first goal was, I don't want to be broke anymore. I want to have some money. And so I wrote that I wanted to be retired and have $3 million in three years. It took about three and a half, four years and our company, which I had no industry knowledge of the mortgage business. My mom was a realtor, so it was kind of, there's a conversation in the house about it a little bit, but um, I, I literally just followed the flow of energy and started thinking outside of the current box of mortgages and said, how can we do better? And that's what helped our company grow from zero to $1.3 billion in sales in three and a half years. And, but about halfway through that process, I'm like, God, this is really cool because now uh, money is, is no longer some, an issue. And I started feeling like there has to be something else because I achieved my goals and yet I wasn't content. And so I started a, a core, an entity, a 501c3 called the Wisdom Foundation based on Goldman's book, um, Emotional Intelligence. Mm -hmm. And my goal was to get emotional intelligence taught in every school in the country because it had such a profound benefit to me in my life. And I started digging into the Board of Education and, the, and all these different layers of mind control, right? Governmente. And I realized they don't want anything to do with this. So then I moved to Costa Rica and then that's when I found a new inspiration, but that's a little bit of the backstory on how it got to where it got. So now fast forward to the year 2022, you are uh, fully, fully involved full time in your company, uh, Food Forest Abundance, which is way more than a company. It's a real transformative vision. Um, and it is something that really you know, concerns all people everywhere in the world, which sounds like it's just about food and dependency, but it's way more than that. It's about transforming our soil again. It's about healing. It's about bringing people together. It's about understanding and harmonizing with nature, all of those beautiful things. Can you run us a little bit about what a day in your life looks like and what Food Forest Abundance is about and stands for? I sure can. So Victor Hugo said, there's one thing stronger than all of the armies of the world. And that is an idea whose time has come. This is it. Bingo. And it's it. It's been demonstrated all over the world. The permaculture network, Bill Mollison and David Holmgren and all the millions of people around the world who have found this agricultural design science that is not a hypothetical solution to all of the world's biggest problems. It is a demonstrable solution to all of the world's biggest problems. And I'm gonna name them, right? The number one problem is mind control. It is this idea that somebody else should be the authority and be the authors of our stories, of our books, instead of us. This idea that only one person per religion can be enlightened or have a light mente. And those are all scams. So the solution 
is when we see through our real eyes and use our resources wisely, following these incredible principles where, for instance, and, and it, we get very specific, we inspire and we empower, right? And specifically, when we turn 50% of the 40 million acres of lawn in the United States alone into regenerative edible landscapes or food forests, we solve deforestation and mass extinction and cancer and heart disease and diabetes trends. We literally end world hunger when we simply do what's best for us and everybody else. Well, and at the same time, you bring independence and self, you know, and reliability, personal responsibility, all that back, which, you know, as you said, inspire and empower, which are two of the most important words that on the Inspire channel as well. So Jim, let me, let me ask you this. Let's say I'm, you know, I, I have a house, average size, average size yards in the United yard in the United States of America. How can I get started? I don't know anything about gardening. Okay. Let's assume yeah. that. And, you know, I'm excited about food forest abundance. How can I get started in my yard, you know, in my space? Yes. So the, you can get started a couple different ways. For people who are DIYers and may be very frugal, um, in fact, if you're frugal and you want to speed up time because you understand what's happening with the food supply chain, then start with a design. Design is job one. It, we have 41 professional food forest landscape designers on our team currently. And that's numbers up by double since three months ago. Like we're, we're expanding exponentially. And the design process accumulates all the knowledge that the permaculture network has accumulated over the decades to find the best path forward for each individual. Every design we do is custom and it's based first on what agricultural zone are you in? And then what that means is what plants are good and will thrive in that zone. And we like to push the edges. Like I've got a ton of tropicals here, even though we're not technically in a tropical area, I'm doing all of it. And some of them won't work, but guess what? 90% of them will when you design the system properly. And that also means less maintenance for a higher yield. So a perennial permaculture food forest is a forest that when it's designed and installed properly, you can leave it for 30 years or 5,000 years like the Amazon, which was a designed food forest 5,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it will just continue to expand and be abundant by its very nature. Because it's mimicking nature, right? Because that's it the is whole point that you are really looking at how nature does it and replicating that process. So in my backyard, how much, I mean, how much space are we talking here to be able to have, you know, let's say 40, 50% of my vegetable and fruit supply in-house, maybe even more. What does that entail? How much work on average? You know, those things. Yeah, awesome. So if you want to design a system that's no maintenance, you simply put in a lot of perennials and then the guilds. A guild is a community of plants that support each other. So you've got your nitrogen fixers, things like legumes, beans and peas, uh, mimosa, and many different leg leguminous plants, which is just a fancy way to say that it's a plant that helps build soil, right? And this is what the permaculture movement, I think, is getting better at, explaining things in a way that doesn't twist people's minds off, because it can, it's, it's the most complex, it's nature. It is the ultimate complexity, and yet it's the ultimate simplicity. When we design according to these natural systems and put these guilds together, you've got flowers in there and those will attract the bees and the butterflies and the hummingbirds. And then you've got ground cover like comfrey, which will actually create, it's a uh, nutrient accumulator, a biodynamic accumulator. So it'll bring a tap root down and it'll bring the nutrients up. And then as the leaves die off, it will build the soil. So this is what we get to do. We don't have to or need to do anything. We get to build a community that is abundant on every level. It's the most incredible transition and the most incredible opportunity in the history of humanity. And the way, the way it works is, so you basically get in touch with Food Forest Abundance 
And the initial process is really a two-step process. Number one is the design, right? So you get, you can uh, hire food forest abundance to design yeah. your food forest in your backyard, wherever you are, according to your climate zone, according to your uh, conditions. And then the second step is if you say, I don't have the time, I don't have the knowledge, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Yeah. You can actually hire a specialist from food forest abundance to come to you and install it for you and run you through it, right? Is that how it works? That's exactly right. So once the design process is over, then this 45 page document, which includes your custom design, goes to you and your local food forest cooperative. The cooperative is the business model, very similar to landscaping, except for foodscaping, Mm -hmm. that installs the food forest. So you start with the design and that's like the architecture of a house. You start with, what do you want to build? Mm -hmm. Then it goes to the, uh, the cooperative and then they go to your market and find out the pricing. Then they give you a bid, which is, okay, this is how much this food forest will cost and you can phase it out or you can do it all at once. And, and boom, then you've got a food forest within 30, 45 days of connection. And Inspire Tribe, I wanted to uh, thank Jim and Food Forest Abundance because they uh, are giving you, our viewers, a discount if you use promo code INSPIRED and use the link in the description and you uh, shop for a, a, a design or go through the process, you can save some money and that just use promo code INSPIRED with the link in the description. Now, Jim, not everyone's a homeowner and not everyone lives in an area where they can plan. There's people that live in the city. But you, you didn't stop there. You didn't stop with homeowners. You said, no, we need to show, educate, and let everyone benefit from this vision. So what are you doing in the cities? How does that work? And how can people get involved that are in urban areas, cities? I love it. And it, you just said something that sparked a thought. I want to convey this message. We have no patents. We have no non-competes. We have no NDAs. Every single thing we put out there is for everybody's use and enjoyment. And there's, there's no, if you want to use anything other than our logo, it's yours to use for free. It's yours to share for free. If you want to create an identical business model, we'll give you the business model, create it. Great. We'll even support you. <laughs> That's what we're about. We're about inspiring this shift in consciousness, catalyzing this shift. So <clears throat> urban areas. So there's so many ways and there's a very big need with the food supply chain right now to start growing. So you can do sweet potatoes. You can do potatoes in a five gallon bucket. You can do microgreens. You can even turn one of your walls into a grow system with grow lights. Thanks to the cannabis industry and network, they've already shown us how to do this. Right. Yeah. They turn closets into grow rooms where they've got incredible growth. So we help on every level and we never stop because stopping is <laughs> that's not even an option. Right. We will continue. And here's something really fun. A hundred percent of our net profits go back into the system to put in food for us in public areas. And so that's how we're, we're kind of laying out this whole thing until the point at which we feel the tipping point has been tipped and we are on the path to freedom. So it means you are working on rededicating public spaces, partially, partially public spaces, parks uh, and to build food forests and education centers, right? So people can show up. There's a kiosk. They can learn. They can sign up. There's even uh, your own currency involved in that. What's that all about? Yes, we're so excited about this. I've had several people share with me, Jim, you shouldn't take this or this idea to market yet. I'm like, what? That's exactly the opposite of what we're doing. We're sharing all of our, our, our good ideas as they come so that we can build together on these ideas. The currency is called topia. Topia means top. Utopia and dystopia don't mean top. Both of them. Topia is the top currency that is directly linked to food in the ground. Mining topia, minting topia means growing food. The only way topia is allocated to society is when people commit via smart contract to growing food ethically, which means without poisons. Dr. Jane Goodall said, we shall look back on this dark era of human agriculture and shake our heads. How could we have ever thought it was a good idea to grow our food with poisons, right? <laughs> So when people commit to growing food nature's way, 
the DAO, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization that will manage Topia, which is the community itself, will allocate Topia, which is a barter exchange mechanism. It's on a blockchain, so it could be called a crypto or money, but we like to think of it at a higher level than that. So this is a holistic vision. And um, one thing that's important, as you said, this is for humanity, this is for everyone. But what I think is serving you and humanity at this point is that you do come from a business background. You do have a business mind in this, which helps bring people together because as they grow internally, as they uh, gain a deeper knowledge and understanding, they can also uh, create more wealth and abundance for themselves in all areas of their lives, which really is a win-win for everyone. So how can people um, share in the spreading of this vision and knowledge and also you know, benefit financially from this. Yeah, I love that. So I am a believer in the voluntary exchange of value, which is regenerative capitalism. It's true capitalism. There's nothing force and violence about it. It's I want something you want. Okay, let's voluntarily exchange. In fact, uh, Nash's equilibrium, this guy, John Nash, who changed, who won the Nobel Prize, which I, I used to believe in until Obama won it and then destroyed everything. Um, <laughs> this Nash's equilibrium, this guy is such a genius. They did a, a movie about him called A Beautiful Mind, mm -hmm. right? And before him, it was this guy, Adam Smith, who, who was the kind of founder of economic theory, who his theory was, if every man or woman does what's best for themselves in the economy, then that will create a strong economy. Nash added, do what's good for you and others. That and others mathematically equates to the individual benefiting more and society benefiting more because it takes, it speaks to the ethics of the voluntary exchange of value. So that's our foundation is the ethical voluntary exchange of value. So we've created a cooperative business model. So I was going to do a franchise model. I actually hired, spent about a quarter million dollars getting a franchise template laid out. And when I got a hold of the documents, there were 244 pages of FDD, franchise disclosure document, and uh, 89 pages of operations manual. And it, it just makes me sick thinking about it. Every line in these documents was a line about scarcity and control. And I threw the whole pile of BS in the trash. And now we have a two page contract and it speaks to the voluntary exchange of value, which is our cooperative. There's no, not, people can come and go anytime they want. It's completely a voluntary situation where we provide the marketing background and all of the different layers of training and support ongoing. We have classes, multiple classes a week on how to create a business of helping people grow food. And that's why it's growing so fast. And this, um, so many of our viewers are very interested in this. Some of them are already experienced. Some of them are very new, but almost everyone wants, first of all, food independence for themselves. Um, having the experience of actually having real, beautiful, wonderful, nutritious, natural foods. But then also, there's the desire to do something that's meaningful, to do something that's sustainable, to do something, as you said, that's good for me and everyone else. And of course, you know, have value benefit in the process. It's not, there's nothing wrong with creating wealth and abundance, especially if it's done through such means, which is really important. Jim, I have a question for you. A lot of people um, are because of the politicizing of everything, you know, they're worried. Is this the Green New Deal project? Is this the Great Reset project? You're not affiliated with any of that, are you? Oh, gosh. I'm the opposite of affiliated with all them people. I am such an anarchist. Anarchy means no ruler. This idea that we should be ruled and governed and controlled and managed is the biggest scam of all freaking time. No, when people rise up their energy levels, their vibrations, as Tesla said, if you want to find the secrets to the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And I think there's a scam in there. Don't think in terms of it, experience in terms of it, feel in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And when we feel and are directed by something bigger than we can even conceive, then we will be directed in a way that's beneficial for us and everybody else. 
that's a beautiful vision. And as I said, I told you, Inspire Trap, this is pure energy. This is pure excitement, inspiration, joy that you can feel from Jim. We share so many of the same values and visions. So this is a perfect fit for us. And Jim, you told me before we um, started this conversation here, you said this is a really, really good time for people to uh, get started. Yeah. Because because of all the factors, what are those factors? Why is it a really good time for people to start today rather than tomorrow or next week or next month? Well, um, I've been a fan of Christian, the Ice Age farmer for a long time. He has put so much energy and thought and love and care into showing people what's going on in the world with regard to the food supply chain. And as Kissinger said, if you want to control nations, control oil. If you want to control people, control food. Now, this isn't the ramblings of some random guy. This is a strategy by the guy who has met with every U.S. president in the last 50 years. And greatly so, influenced every U.S. president in the last 50 years. Yeah. Exactly. It's led to basically four corporations uh, controlling all of the meat and almost all of the grain and all of the soy and all of the what people think is food. It's all controlled, which goes up to one corporation. And so let's get rid of that. Let's decentralize because it's good for us. I mean, what are our, our family's odds of getting cancer, diabetes, and heart disease when we have a food forest in our backyard? They go way down. Because, and this is important, food is medicine. Food is, equals medicine. There's, ev there's for every little ailment and disease in your body, there is medicine in the plant world. Um, that, and that's distributed through food. So that's just something we haven't even touched on, but this is so important for people to remember. Yes, yes. Like Hippocrates said, let thy food be thy medicine, let thy medicine be thy food. It is the foundation when we eat food that's vine ripened in a natural way without poisons. It is healing by its very nature. It's part of the system. God's nature is amazing system. And, and Jim, as as people, you know, Christine and I, you um, and a lot of people in your network, we have all studied the systems of the world. But like you said, you kind of go through this dark night of the soul when you begin to open your eyes to how things really work, which is an important era, as long as you don't stay stuck in it, right? It's important to realize this. But one of the things that people have a hard time grasping, and you touched on it right now, is we are at this time in human history where we are so dependent on the supermarket shelves. We're so dependent on supply chains that we have no control over. And these supply chains have been and are being collapsed on purpose, this is happening by design. Um, this is to implement a much bigger, stricter control system. And people do not want to hear this, but it's really today that you need to start to think about your independence and taking action towards um, independence in all areas. But, but of course, food will always be on the top of that list. Um, do you agree with that, that we really have no time to waste when it comes to that? Time is of the essence. And then the next question is, why do people not use their lawns to grow food? And then, the, and then you turn in permaculture, you turn the problem into the solution. It's all a bunch of BS. It's belief systems, bad science and bullshit. It's the programming about growing food that started out to uh, for kings in, in Europe to say, hey, look at I don't need to grow food because I've got so much wealth that I can have our slaves cutting the lawn. And Goethe said, none are more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe they are free. <laughs> we have been slaves when we wake up to that and then we see the solution is literally in our backyards. The slavery and the tyranny of cancer and diabetes and heart disease and all these other things can be solved when we open up and align our hearts and our minds to natural systems. Right? And so... It's so easy. It's actually easier than growing a lawn. And I'll take one peach tree guild as an example. You know, let's say you spend um, five, six hundred bucks and you put a peach tree guild in your yard. Within 24 months, you're getting 100 percent ROI or better when you add some annuals in at the base. Within three or four years, you're getting hundreds of percent ROI per year out of that one guild. And you don't have to mow it every day. You might spend it two hours a year. Um, pruning it. And when you prune it, you can actually turn pruning into air layering with a lot of different tree species, where now you, you cut off 10 branches 
do it strategically and you've got 10 new fruit trees. The abundance is literally infinite when you, you, when you work with nature. It just, it makes me want to, you know, after we log off, it just makes me want to go out into our garden, touch our plants and have another conversation like I did this morning. Uh, Jim, Inspired Tribe. Jim Gale, Food Forest Abundance. I don't think, you know, in a long time, I haven't met anyone who's, you know, as passionate, dedicated and inspired about uh, his vision. And uh, this is every time we speak. Jim, we definitely would love to have you back so you can keep us updated but today I'm asking you, Inspired Tribe, you are always asking for solutions. You're always asking, what can I do? Here's something that will benefit you, your children, and the generations to come. You know we love sharing the wisdom of the American Indian cultures. And what, what they always say, what they've been taught by the peacemaker is, make your decisions based on the seventh generation. What's going to happen to that generation if you make that choice today? Think about what making the choice to start your own food forest, to start becoming independent, to start harmonizing with nature will do to you and the generations to come. And as we said, uh, this is a wonderful opportunity to learn, to uh, get in touch with a network of people that has already put time and energy and effort into developing these systems. And you can just use the link in the description. As we said, you can save a little bit of money uh, uh, while you're at it, just use promo code INSPIRED. And Jim and his team will take wonderful care of you, no matter what size, what stage. No, there's a solution for everyone. You just have to start at some point. And we'd say today is the right day. Jim Gale, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here today. Um, what are your, your final words for today? Your message to the people out there that you want them to keep in their hearts and minds? Uh, my, my final message would be, we never stop. We are here on every level, not just now, not just for your design, not just for your install, but we're constantly thinking and asking new questions. How can we serve the community in a bigger way? And so we're always coming out with new ideas and new techniques and new everything. So if you're interested on any level in being in the business of growing food or growing foods for yourself, please get a hold of us. We would love to help you do that. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you so much, Inspired Tribe, for joining us again today. We're wishing you a wonderful, inspired, joyous, and happy rest of your day. Awesome.